Um, so this is so cool. This is, I think, our biggest cloth diaper class ever. So um, this is awesome. So thanks, everyone, for coming out and for us outside. Um, my name is Sherry, and I'm the owner of the store. So this is the first time we've ever taught this class. I do this every day, but it's the first time I've done it officially. So um, I might have to look at my notes. <laughs> um, so I don't, everyone comes to the cloth diaper or considers it for different reasons. Um, one is economically, you can save like $1,500 to $2,000 on your first child and even more on your second child by choosing a cloth diaper. Environmentally, obviously, you're not putting all of those disposable diapers into a landfill, which they are saying about 500 years per diaper, and that's an estimate because, you know, we haven't been disposable diapering long enough to know if that's accurate or not. Um, and then also for the health of your baby, chemically, most disposable diapers contain some pretty gross stuff like um, dioxins, which are one of the worst carcinogens um, on the planet, chlorine bleach, and other things um, as well. And then lastly, just because you don't get blowouts and things like that with cloth diapers that you do with disposable diapers, so in that respect, it's a little bit more convenient. Um, so everybody kind of comes to it for different reasons. And there are, of course, with everything, when you're having a baby, there are tons of choices. So what I'll do is kind of talk about what our different options are in, as a general overview, and then you guys can ask questions along the way or at the end if you'd like. And then we can also look at different types of diapers if you want to. So we'll start with the basics, kind of where cloth diapers started, um, which is with a pre-fold diaper. So some of you may have been diapered with these. I know I was. Um, so three folds are the most, the second most economical option that there is, um, and there are some really great advantages to them, and then there are some things that some people, so I'll give you kind of the pros and cons that we hear from our customers. So the great thing is it's economical. They're also a workforce. Lots of people have them eight, nine years after their kids are out of diapers. They wash their cars with them. They use them as pot holders, dusting rags, you know. So they're really useful. Um, so they're layers and layers of cotton. Uh, there are Indian prefolds and there are Chinese prefolds. And what that means is that the cotton is grown and comes from India. The cotton is grown and comes from China. They're are different camps on which one's better, which one's worse. You can't really see, for us, I don't know a real big difference, but everyone kind of has their preference, it seems. Um, so we carry both. There's also bleached and unbleached. So the white ones have been bleached using a hydrogen peroxide bleach, and the natural ones are unbleached. So that would be the difference in the colors. There are also different sizes, so depending on your child. Um, but the basics of this is, this is what you're looking at. And it used to be that you would use safety pins. So you would wrap it around the child um, by fold. There's different folds, but your basic folds just to try fold it like this. And then put it on the baby and you're just wrapping it like this. And then there are these piece in the back. Can you grab it? Like this. So it used to be that our moms and moms before had used pre or safety pins. And now there is something called a snappy. So on the snappy there are these little teeth on it and they're actually just grabbing the prefold like that and now your diaper's secure. So it's really convenient to do it this way um, and then these are like easy to use. You're not going to hurt yourself or your child when you're doing it. Uh, and now what you have is not waterproof. So there's nothing waterproof on this so you need something to keep everything in its place. So that's where a cover comes in. So a cover is made from something called PUL or PUL, which is a polyurethane laminate. Um, and it makes your waterproof barrier. There are also some out there made from which is a, um, a more biodegradable material. Um, so the inside of it looks like this. So you can use a wipe to clean it in between if it gets a little bit damp. So these are go over the um, prefold like this and like this. And once everything's nice and tucked in, like so, 
then you, the diaper is completely waterproof. So ideally, you're not going to get any leaking. You're not going to get any blowouts at the back like you do with disposal diaper. Everything's going to stay contained because you have elastic everywhere, so it's going to fit your baby really well. And then you have double elastic around the legs, which is called the gusset. So this would be your complete prefold diaper. So the benefit to a prefold is the economics. They're super absorbent. And then once your child grows out of that size, they make great um, extra absorbency for nighttime diapers. Um, so they have a lot of use the whole time that you're diapering. The negative is it's a multi-step process. And sometimes when you're out in public, it can be a little bit you know, bulky to carry all this stuff with you. So that would be the negative. They range in price from $2 to $3 a prefold. So with your normal stash for a newborn being $24, $48, you've got all your diapers. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, the covers are cool because, because they're made out of this material and you can wipe them if necessary, you only need one cover for every three to four diaper changes. So when you add that to the cost of the prefold, it probably is <coughs> a little bit, but not much, since the average cost of a cover is about 13, 12 or $13. So that's a really good thing about covers as well. So you can use them multiple times, and they're easy to wash. So if you're in a pinch, you can just wash them in the sink really quick. They dry in about 45 minutes, hang and dry. So they're really convenient. They can also be used with other things that we'll talk about later on, so they're really flexible, so it's a good option. Probably for newborns, prefolds and covers are the most popular option in the store because it's so economical and you get a really good fit on them. Um, so these are the gussets, gussets I was talking about. So you can see here that this one's a double gusset, which seems to be the preference for most people because you get that extra kind of barrier. <laughs> layer of protection, if you will. Um, so you can see that this one has Velcro and this one has snaps. So everybody calls their Velcro something different. You can you will hear it referred to as hook and loop, Velcro, Aplix. It just depends on the manufacturer. They all have a different term for it. The positives of this are when you have a newborn and you're changing in the middle of the night, you don't want to turn the light on. It's really easy to get a really good fit. The other positive is some, no offense, but some dads don't like snaps. It can get really confusing knowing where to snap it and remembering where, um, so some dads don't like them. The negative is that a lot of kids figure out how to do that. My nephew, unfortunately, figured out at about 16 months how to do that. So <laughs> we're kind of in trouble either way, so he does not walk around without clothes on. Um, so, so, there, so what we generally recommend is a couple of these for newborns, just because they are easy to use, and um, also like for babysitters or grandparents who might not be so diaper, cloth diaper savvy, it's just <coughs> easier than saying pull it over to the fourth snap and then the third snap. Because this can get a little overwhelming because you've got snaps going all over here and all up here. And if you're not familiar, it could be a little bit overwhelming what to do. So show you on this. You can adjust the rise in most products that we sell. So this is the rise. So when you hear people talk about a low rise, a high rise, it's all in here on your baby. So what you do is taking these snaps here, you're snapping them up like this to make the adjustment to fit them as they grow. So this happens to be a size two, um, so it's gonna be a little bit larger than a newborn, but basically you're doing that, and that's sizing your diapers rise. And then you leave it like this until the baby grows, and then you unsnap it, and you can change it again. So that's what this myriad of snaps here is for. So that's how those work, and that's the, that's your rise. The covers also can work with our next kind of diaper, which is a fitted diaper. So fitted diaper is a cross between like a disposable diaper and a prefold diaper. So they come also in many shapes and forms, but for our example, we'll use this one, which happens to be made out of bamboo which is 
one of the most absorbent materials on the market. Um, hemp and bamboo are really close together. Some people say hemp is a little bit more absorbent, but they're far more absorbent than cotton. So they're an awesome choice for nighttime and nap time especially. Um, so this one's made out of, um, out of bamboo and cotton, but a fitted, same thing. It's not um, waterproof at all, but it's called a fitted because when they first started, they were small, medium, and large, so they were fit to the size of your baby at the time. Now everyone's kind of gone and gotten fancy and put snaps on them and made them one size and everything, but the idea was initially that, that's, that they were fit in sizes for your child. They are super simple to do. You know, you're just putting it on, so it's really similar to a disposable. You're just putting it on and snapping it or Velcroing it on your baby, like so. And then you're putting a cover over the top. So it's really easy to do. And then when they soil it, then you're just taking it off, putting this in the diaper pail, getting another one and putting the cover on. So they're really simple. The advantage to them is that everything is absorbent, just like on the pre-fold. So this whole part here is absorbing because it's all multi-layered. Most of your fitteds are gonna have extra absorbency here or they're gonna have another piece to them, which I'll show you um, on the next ones that add extra absorbency in the middle. But when we look at some other diapers, you'll see like all the absorbencies here, but you're not getting anything here. So that's the advantage of a fitted and why they make the best nighttime and nap time options. Um, and a lot of our customers use them all the time because they're easy and they're fast. And when they're older and running around, you don't even have to put a cover on them if you're changing them frequently. So, and again, they're like elastic everywhere. There are side snapping ones, and then there are some that snap in the front, like so. So the advantage of side snaps is that they're trimmer generally around the waist. So if your kid, it sounds silly, but if your kids are like in tight fitting out, <laughs> like rompers or something, and you don't really want them in this big bulk, this can help cut down on the bulk. Also, it seems that kids, it takes them a long time to learn this motion as opposed to pulling it right in the front. They can't really figure out how to do this as easily. So that's an advantage to having a side snap as well. It's all about staying one step ahead. <laughs> that's all it is. Um, so that's kind of the difference between a side snap and a front snap. This is probably like, it's, it's right now at Franklin Goose, it's the king of diapers for us. It's our favorite diaper right now because it's hemp and organic cotton. So nighttime, we can't find anything to beat it if you put wool with it. But you can see that it has that extra piece that I was talking about. And this is a one size diaper. <coughs> so instead of sizing up here like this, you're folding this piece down and doing this. And I can show you all later, like if anyone's specifically interested, but that's how you're making this one smaller. And then you can use the insert when you're ready. So that's how they get away with it being one size and still small enough. Something like this, in, our, in my opinion, isn't really necessary until the child's sleeping more than like four hours because you're just changing all the time. You're feeding every two to three hours and you're changing them. So really, this isn't really necessary until they start sleeping for longer stretches. Um, so that's when the benefit of this comes in. And then there are, of course, ones with super cute patterns of dogs and kitties and submarines and whatnot, um, which, believe it or not, you will get really excited about at some point. Uh, so the next, the other option that is the most economical one that scares most people half to death is a flat. So you can see it's really thin, so it's not gonna do anything on its own. So a flat has to be folded. And we have some really good videos about how to fold them. And you know, I was like, there's no way I would ever do this until I, talk, until I started folding them. And then I thought it was kind of cool. Um, I don't know if I'd do it all the time, but it is so, they're so absorbent. They're so affordable and there's so many uses to them. Like they can fold up really well to be an extra absorbency in a pocket diaper overnight. So there's a lot of options to them. So check out some flat diapers and I can try to remember how to fold them or we have videos that you can watch them. But they're a really good option and they're like $1.25 or something a piece. So there's something to consider. 
They also can snap close. You can use a snappy with them to close them, and then you do always need a cover with them as well. So, the negative <laughs> there we go. Um, do you have questions so far about the prefolds and flats, or do you guys want to ask at the end? Or okay, we'll do it then. Um, if you have questions, just stop me because I can start talking too fast. Um, so the next one. So as cloth diapers evolved, the pocket diaper came about, and so what the pocket diaper did was it offered you an option to have the waterproofing all built in. So it was just like a one-shot thing. Really easy because you just snap them or Velcro them, everything's here, it comes off, and it goes into the diaper pail, and that's it. Uh, but you need absorbency. So they made this pocket, and the pocket is where your inserts go. So most all of our pocket diapers come with inserts, and I think some do, if you buy them online, some don't, so kind of keep your eye out for them if you're not buying them here. But they'll come with the inserts, and the inserts get stuffed into the pocket like so, and then like this, and then now you have your absorbency. The benefit of this is that you can take one out, which is really small, and just be using one insert so they're not as bulky on your baby so that their bum's not quite as large. Um, and you can add lots of different stuff. So they're great for nighttime options because you can add hemp inserts, you can add bamboo inserts, you can do so much with these and they all stay fit or put right into the pocket. The negative is after they've soiled them, you have to pull this out and put them in, and put them in the diaper pail separately. So for daycare, this isn't always a favorite option because when they sit in the wet bag all day long, it's a little funky by the time you get it home and have to pull them out. So that's, they're our least selling diaper right now. They used to be all we sold and now as other diapers have evolved, they've become less and less popular um, because of that stuffing. So every time you wash, you have to stuff. Every time you they are soiled, you have to take out. This diaper works a little bit differently though, so I wanted to show you that because this is a one size diaper, so it has the snaps across the top, but it adjusts with Velcro on the inside and a button. So you're unbuttoning it and um, then you're just cinching it up like this by pulling the Velcro and you're making the leg teeny tiny. So it's kind of a cool option, and Fuzzy Buns does something different than everybody in that you can also adjust the waist so you don't get any gapping, so there's no there's no chance that you're going to get a bunch of poop up the back. Of the um, so, that, so that's kind of cool, and so some, some diapers do this this way, and it, it like makes less fuss a little bit on the outside as well, and again, you would only be doing that every time the child grows. You don't do it every single time. So that's a pocket. Um, and then, so then they decided they wanted to make it simple. And so they made an all-in-one. And this is kind of the, like, it's the easiest way to go. It's the closest thing to a disposable diaper that there is. It's called an all-in-one because everything's here. You have your waterproofing <coughs> material here. You have your um, your inserts or your um, is here, so all your absorbency is right here. So you don't have to put anything in. You don't have to add anything. All you do is put it on, snap it closed or Velcro it closed, and you're done. And then when it's soiled, you take it off and you throw it in the diaper pail. So this is a fantastic option for like babysitters. Our grandparents, aunts and uncles, people who aren't really familiar with cloth diapering, because it's just it you just take it off, you put it on, that's it. It's also a great thing, like if you have daycares who are kind of on the fence, if you can take this in and say, look, it's just like a disposable, you put it on, take it off, that's it. Sometimes you can convince them to do it. Um, so it used to be that all in once everything was sewn in and you didn't have a flap and they were it was all thick, and there's still some that make that. What we found in Richmond is that often we're getting mold issues because it takes so it's so humid here 
that their diapers are taking them so long to dry that they're um, getting moldy. And then um, also it's taking so long to dry that parents are getting kind of annoyed because if you're running slow on diapers and they're drying for three hours, it's not really convenient anymore. Um, with an all-in-one, the negative is that you don't want to dry your PUL or your waterproof material. You want to keep it out of the dryer as much as possible. So with your all-in-ones, most people put them in the dryer most of the time to get them to dry quickly, so they're wearing down a little bit quicker. A little bit quicker means two kids, not three. You know, one and a half, not two and a half to three kids. So you're still getting at least one and a half children out of your all-in-ones. They're just not going quite as far. But the quality of the all-in-ones that we carry, we have people coming in and selling their used all-in-ones to us after two kids, and they look almost brand new. So if you take care of them and you dry them on low heat, you know, then they're really, they really hold up. So that's that. Um, and there are different, they're all different kinds. A lot of our all-in-ones are now coming with pockets. So at nighttime, like this one's made by Swaddlebees and around here it's like the Cadillac of all-in-ones online. It's probably one of the best ones re review-wise. So what they do is they just use hemp inserts with it overnight and it's like leaf proof. It's crazy. It's 11 layers of cotton. And what they've done is given you the option of stuffing this in the pocket and then you have the cotton against the skin. So if you're more, if you want more natural fibers versus a um, stay dry lining, then you have the option to do that. So stay dry um, is a, it's a polyester blend and it's called stay dry because that's what it does. It wicks all the moisture away from the baby, not all, it wicks a lot of the moisture away from the baby's skin so that they don't feel soaking wet in the cotton, like the pre-fold, the flat, or this way, they're gonna feel the wetness a lot more. Um, for some people, that's a good thing. That's the whole point of cloth diapers. They feel wet, they get out, they potty train a lot faster, that's the point. If you are trying to keep them asleep, not necessarily so great that they feel wet because they may wake up sooner than you want them to, and 10 to 12 hours sleeping is really awesome. So, um, and then also for boys, it seems to be a little bit more important to have the um, the stay dry because they're more sensitive because of their anatomy they're more sensitive to the wetness and so they tend to get a little bit we find they tend to get more irritable about being wet and they want out of their diaper a lot quicker than girls do necessarily and then also because of the way that they go to the bathroom sometimes natural fibers have a hard time absorbing quick enough and so you may get some small leaking out of the diaper. So sometimes we find that <coughs> a layer of fleece on top helps to catch it really quickly and then let it slowly absorb into the natural fibers. So that's kind of, if you're having a boy, something you might consider is getting fleece liners if you're doing pre-folds or natural fibers. By nature, they're just slower absorbers. So then to make matters more complicated. They came out with something called a hybrid. And these are just, I don't know, they just kind of tick every box. They're barely more expensive than pre, well, they're a little bit more expensive than prefolds, but not a lot more expensive. And so you're getting super convenience with not a lot more price. So a hybrid or an all-in-two is a two-piece system. So you have your cover, just like we had with the pre-folds. This one happens to have netting on the inside, so it's just a little bit different. Um, another disadvantage. Um, so anyway, so you have your cover here, which again you can use for pre-folds, you can use for fitteds, you can use for flats. So that's the great thing about this. And then you can also use it for the all-in-two part, which is a snap-in insert. So. All this does is snap in here like this and it adds another gusset. So now you've got your two gussets so um, for leaking. And then this is it. This goes on the baby. And then when the baby soils the diaper, um, when the baby soils the diaper, all you're doing is snapping like this. This goes in the diaper pail and this goes on back on the baby. That you can put another one of these in. 
most people will have several of these made up and then when they have a free minute if the baby's napping or whatever they'll snap more in but um, so that's it which is really awesome because it saves you a lot of money um, it also is more convenient because if you're going out you take one cover and a couple of these it's a lot less bulky in your diaper pail I mean in your diaper bag um, and if you're traveling and you decide to take your cloth diapers same thing it's just not as much bulk and a lot more flexibility so this is a so it's a hybrid or an all-in-two system. Personally, like I mean, it's definitely our best-selling option for cloth diapering in the store. There's just there's a, two different options that we carry. It was the idea was started by a G diaper, and we don't carry G diaper because we um, because it's size, so it's extra small, small, medium, large, and it gets really expensive. So, and then also it doesn't have the greatest reviews. So what we try to do is we try to get you into systems where you're not buying all the time. Every time the child grows, you know, it gets really expensive. So our two, you know, have minimal, you know, reinvestment. So that's, that's that. Um, this is a company that refers to it as a hook and loop. So they've got like their proprietary thing, which they say this doesn't stick to anything, but Twitter. Um, I can tell you this is the system my sister uses, so I have a lot of experience. She's on her second kid with these, and they look brand new. So the quality of them is phenomenal. Um, some of our staff uses that system, and they love that just as much. It's just a difference in, you know, in opinion. But the convenience factor is really nice on them, um, although my sister says if she would have known about all-in-ones at the time, then she would have done all all in ones. Um, but they're so they're really flexible, and I love that because then you can use the covers at night over your fitted diapers, and you're not reinvesting in a whole another night system. You're just reusing what you already have, and because they're one size, you can use them from newborn all the way through generally, and even into potty training at night if you want to. So that's the benefit of. Of an all two. So that kind of covers the different types of diapers. Um, so I guess we can talk about like next we should talk about like what do you do? So the baby is peed in the diaper, pooped in the diaper. The first six months, if you're breastfeeding, you don't have to clean the poop off of the diaper because it's it's liquid, it's just soluble so it can just go right into the washing machine right into the dryer or hang dry no problem once you start formula or food then you have to get the poop off of the diaper so there's a couple different options for that one you can do it old school which is just taking the poopy part and putting it into the water and dunking it around and swishing it and waiting for the poop to come off um, the other one is using disposable liners. So these are made from corn fibers. They're on a big roll. This is 200 of them. And think of it kind of like toilet paper where you're just pulling off a sheet of it. And all you're doing is laying it on top of the diaper in between the diaper and your baby's bum. And it's just kind of a trap for poop. So then you, you pick it up, it flushes down the toilet and with the poop, or you can just shake it off because it keeps it from absorbing. They're amazingly convenient, especially if you're out with your cloth diapers and you don't necessarily want to bring all your poop home or scrape it off <laughs> in the car and toilet, which, you know. Um, also, it keeps, uh, there's a funny story with that, but, um, and so they're really convenient for that. The unfortunate part is if you have really messy poops, it doesn't necessarily keep it all off of here, you know. Um, if it gets bunched up or something, then you've got other problems and then you do what we do is um, you take the hose outside and swim it off. Um, so, so, they're, so they're good and bad but I think overall they're really good. It also is great to like if you're having any kind of like rashing issue or if you're if you're using antibiotic creams for any kind of infection it provides a barrier um, between the whatever's on your baby and makes them feel a little bit drier and then you don't have to worry about anything getting on your diaper, which we'll discuss in a little bit. So there are those advantages as well. The other option is a diaper sprayer. Um, so this is a diaper sprayer. 
and it attaches to the water line in your toilet. It comes with everything. So it comes with your tubing, your gaskets, and all of that stuff. And what it does is literally, it's like a bidet. So it just, you spray the poop off the diaper. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, my brother-in-law did not like cloth diapers for two years until they got a diaper sprayer. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you just spray the poop right into the, into the, toilet and you're done. It's also awesome for potty training because you can spray the potty out, you know, their little potties out when they're potty training, um, which is really awesome. So they, so it just attaches, it should be fairly, really easy. You're just putting a gasket on your line and, you know, that's it. Um, this one, you can control the water flow at the handle. The other one is down at the, at the line. That's the only difference, but they're both stainless steel. They're super convenient. Um, and then, like, you can take these when you're out, and then you're not bringing the poop home. The nice thing about these two is, like, it just kind of rinses them off as well, so it just kind of gets everything out of them. So when they're sitting in the diaper pails, if they're not soaking in that. Um, so, so, which kind of brings us to that point about how you store your cloth diapers. Um, you can use a traditional diaper pail. We sell the diaper decor because, honest to God, it doesn't smell. Um, so you can use a traditional diaper pail without a problem. Um, so this one has a lock on it, which you'll appreciate when they're like like one and a half and they want to play with their poopy diaper. So anyway, it, and then it's got like a double barrier. But so you can just throw them in here and then take them out. What's cool about cloth diapering is that they make these pail liners, which are made out of the same thing as the covers, so they're waterproof, and then you just reuse them. So you keep them in your diaper pail, and when your cloth diaper is dirty, you just grab the whole thing, dump them out of the pail liner, throw the pail liner in the wash, and you're good to go. So now you don't have to go to the store for diapers, you don't have to go to the store for pail liners. It's perfect. So, and it saves you a ton of money, because these are $16.50, and one box of pail liners is 17 bucks and you're having to rebuy that over and over again. So something to consider if you want to go this route. The other option, which is great if you're low on space um, or you don't want something plastic, is a hanging wet dry bag. So a wet dry bag is dry and it is wet. So this is where all your wet stuff goes because this is waterproof. So everything, all your soiled stuff goes in here, and then you can zip it up and just hang it on the hook, on the doorknob, wherever, and it doesn't take up as much space. It's quite a bit cuter um, than that, and you can take it with you. So if you're going somewhere overnight, if, the, if you are lucky enough that you have people that will watch your child overnight, it goes right with them. So it's really cool for that reason. Um, and then it just all, it gets thrown right into the washing machine and clean it that way. It goes, they say hang dry, um, and then, you know, you're good to go. So that's another option. It's the same price. <coughs> no, it's $10 cheaper than the diaper decor as well. So it's $29.99 versus $39.99. How is it with containers now? You know, actually it's quite surprisingly good. Um, it's not perfect. It's not as good as the diaper decor, I would say. But it's pretty good, especially if you zip it up, um, which my sister wasn't doing for a while. And it got you when you walked in the room, and she's like, oh, I should zip it. Um, so <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, sleep deprived. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. I would say it's, you know, like 80%. But you're washing. You want to wash your diapers. You don't want your diapers to sit more than like two and a half days would be the maximum, especially in Richmond because of our humidity. So most parents a figure around two days um, that you're washing your diapers. Every day and a half to two days you're washing them. And in that amount of time, generally, they're not building up a lot of smell. The beauty of cloth diapers is they smell so much less than a disposable diaper because you don't have that chemical reaction going on. And that's really what makes the smell. Um, so they're not nearly as smelly. Um, as I have friends who, I swear, they put them in a basket. 
They put them in a basket in their living room. You walked into their house. You never smelled anything. I couldn't believe it. They were the first people I ever knew who cloth diapered about five years ago, and you didn't smell anything. I haven't found that since then, or maybe it was Boston versus Richmond. I don't know. Um, but they don't smell as bad. And you think about it, after six months, you're, white, you're cleaning the poop off. So that's really, you know, you're cleaning the poop off, so all you're doing, you have in there is pee-filled diapers. So that's a big plus as well. Um, so that's taking some of the smell out. Although once they start sleeping a lot, the diapers are going to be disgusting anyway. So um, there's some <laughs> You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> um, so those are your options for a storage <coughs> with it with the cloth diapers. And if, I mean, you can use anything you want. People use like this this trash cans where you step on it and it flips open. You can do anything you want. You have more flexibility with cloth because it doesn't smell nearly as bad. Um, so detergents. So now you've, you know, you've cleaned the poop off and you're ready to go. We recommend you use a cloth diaper safe detergent. They're just, they're made to get rid of the ammonia. They're made to break it down. They're generally made to take care of the stains a little bit better. We carry four different kinds now. Um, we carry rock and green. We carry eco nuts, which are like a soap nut off of a tree. We carry Charlie's and we carry Honest. Um, you can certainly try Tide. It works for some people. It doesn't work for everyone. Some people are having really good luck with Trader Joe's powder detergent. Um, each cloth diaper company has its own recommendations for you, so we can talk to you about that once you choose a system. Something that's really good about the pre-folds and the fitteds, you don't have to be quite as fussy about the recommendations because you're not worrying about the PUL and <coughs> stuff all the time. Um, but if you don't use the right detergent, if you use too much detergent, um, you will get like buildup, you'll get leaking, you'll get smell issues, um, all of which we can help you with, but it just makes, it just provides a little bit more challenging, more challenges. The, our laundry detergents actually, it, it, break, it works out to be less expensive than like your Tide and everything. Whatever you do, please do not use dress on your diapers. It is, it's chemical. It's fragranced, um, and it will not clean your diapers at all. Um, so it, it has a bunch of stuff in there that's just not good for cloth diapers. Um, so the track is that. That's a question real quick. Yes. Is that detergent good for baby's clothes, too? It's awesome. And actually, all, almost everyone here, we just use it for our clothes and everything okay. because it works out to be, like the Eco Nuts are awesome. They're 9.9 .9 cents a load for washing. There's nothing on the market that cheap. They're completely organic. Um, the Rock and Green's 25 cents a load. I think this is like 23. The Charlie's is about 22. So, and Tide is like 30 something. So it works out cheaper and it's much safer because they don't have any chemicals in them. They don't have any fragrancing. Um, the, the free and clear products, if you want to use Tide, don't use anything that's free and clear. It has a, boric, a derivative of boric acid in that and that will eat away at your PUL like that. Um, same thing if you make your own laundry detergent, that's awesome. Don't use it on your cloth diapers because borax is not, not good at all. Don't use it on your wet bags, don't use it on your pail liners, not good. Um, so, you know, it, wherever you come out on that, that's just kind of be really mindful of what you're using. And it's the same thing with your diaper balms. So you don't want to use anything that has petroleum in it. So that's your butt paste and your desitin and all of those things have petroleum base in them. Petroleum is petrol, which is oil, which creates a nice big slick in your cloth diapers and a nice barrier and nothing will absorb and there's no way to get it off. So you basically, in essence, pretty much ruin your diapers. Um, you can work really hard at it and sometimes you can get some of your absorbency back, but you're never going to get them like they were. So if you have a child that has infections or if they, um, anything like that, and you have to use something, either A, switch to disposables for that time period, or B, use a disposable liner, like we were talking about earlier, to provide a barrier so that it's not getting into your diapers. If, so the cool thing about um, cloth diapers is that you, 
we have people whose kids never get a diaper rash, ever, um, because there's not that reaction with the chemicals in the diapers, so they don't get them. If for some reason your child does, we offer, there's like six or seven natural um, diaper creams that we have. They don't have petroleum in them. Most of them are all organic. There's like cool essential oil smells, but not anything that's chemically fragranced. And so you always want to look for something that's cloth diaper safe. Um, so you can also use lanolin, you can use coconut oil, you can use things like that that aren't going to, aren't going to like put that coating on the inside of your diaper. So just be really mindful of what you're using in that case as well. Okay, so then um, that leaves us with wool, which um, get, you, if you want to see Stephanie and I get really excited, just tell us your thing about wool and our whole faces will light up. Wool is a natural fiber, obviously. It is absolutely hands down the bomb for, um, of, for not letting anything leak through. So it, it is an amazing option for nighttime diapering. Um, a lot of our customers will kind of switch off between that during the day as well. It is a natural fiber, so it's breathable, whereas the PUL is not really breathable. Um, the benefit to wool, aside from being a natural fiber, is that once you lanolize wool using lanolin, it it's a wall. I mean, nothing gets through it. If it's, it's lanolized properly, which isn't hard to do, it, there's no absorbency. It's super cute. And in the summer, it's not hot because it, it's breathing. So it also, <coughs> you, you'll find kids in wool is, are, don't even get rashes even less because of that breathability. So it's just a, it's just a, <coughs> Um, so it's a really cool option. Generally, like, it, you know, if you're really into being all natural and not having any kind of synthetic polyester or anything, it's really awesome for that. Um, and then what's cool about it is on into potty training, um, they're awesome for nighttime with like a, with a cloth diaper potty training pant because the kids can pull it up and down on their own. And then even into daytime with a pair of training pants underneath, they can just pull them up and down and make it feel like they're wearing underwear. Um, the cool thing about wool, too, is that you don't have to wash it very often. So every week and a half, throw it in with some eucalyptus in the same hand wash it, hang it to dry, you're good to go for about another week and a half. And then every about month and a half or so, or if you see a little bit of moisture on the outside or a little bit of leaking, re it, that's it. So where you may need like eight regular covers, you need two wool. So it kind of makes up for the cost because it is they are a lot more expensive, but they're really easy to use because unless poop gets on them, you're going to wash them for a long time. So... Something to consider. Um, so wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the wool is basically used as a cover. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> it's not the diaper. Sorry, I wasn't clear about that. Yeah, so it would go over your fitted diaper or over your prefold or over your flat. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, or over training pants. Yeah. So it's a cover, not a diaper. So we do like a whole class on wool as well. So if you're, you know, if you're interested and we can't answer your class your questions so we do a whole class on that too but it's 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 so easy to maintain and for me like thinking about not having to wash a cover all the time is a pretty cool deal um it makes like wool long pants and wool shorts and you know you know what i do um so the next thing to think about with cloth diapering is cloth wipes so if you use cloth wipes on your child instead of disposable wipes, you'll save about $800. So we're now well over $2,000 on your first child, um, close to $3,000. So the nice thing about it is that you only have to have one pail. If you use disposable wipes with your cloth diapers, you have to have a trash can as well because you don't want them ending up in the diaper pail. It also avoids a lot of arguments when someone forgets and puts the um, disposable liner in the cloth diaper and that goes in the wash and that gets into little millions of pieces and you're cleaning them off the cloth diaper. Um, so, and they're really thick so there's less chance that you're going to get anything on your hands when you're cleaning the baby, which is nice as well. 
So that's a good thing. Um, and you generally only need one. So we say to get about 24 of them for a newborn. So you have one for each change because you can use them. You know, because you can kind of use several different parts of it, fold it up. So, and they feel really good. Um, if you if you choose to use cloth like cloth wipes, you can use like concentrations like this, which are just little cubes that you dispose in or dissolve in hot water, and um, then you put them like in a spray bottle, and you can spray the baby's bum every time you wipe. You can spray the wipes, or you can put them like in a wipes warmer that has, even if you don't want to warm them, um, that has like a pillow and you just get this wet every morning and lay the wipes on top of that and then that just keeps them moist during the day and then you can just pull them out of here and use them. Um, another thing that a lot of people say really changes their life about cloth diapering because it's easy and it just makes sense when you're doing it. Um, so, or you can use water. Some people just use water. They don't even use a, like a solution for it. And you can just spray that. Or you can just keep, like, in the morning, get them all damp, put them in a, ba a bag or a Tupperware container, and then just use them that way during the day. So that's um, an option as well. So I, I'm going to look at my notes really quick and make sure that these things are. Um, do you guys have questions oh okay one thing I did forget is that when talking about materials so when you have anything that's waterproof it doesn't go in the dryer if at all possible because it just slowly breaks down you know the PUL or the TPU it just slowly kind of wears it away so you want to hang dry anything that has that as much as possible so like with your pocket Diapers, for instance, these can go in the in the washer and the dryer, but these have to preferably hang dry. Um, so, you know, that's what we were kind of talking about with the all-in-ones. And then with your all your natural things that are not waterproof, washer and dryer, no problem, hot, doesn't matter. When you're washing your diapers, everyone kind of comes up with their own system, but like a cold rinse, hot wash, cold rinse is a general rule of thumb. If you have an HG washer, that great water savings stinks for cloth diapers. So you really kind of, it doesn't give you enough water to fully rinse them out. So we suggest that you get like a towel soaking wet and throw it in with your, so that it tricks your HG machine into thinking that, that there's more in there and it will give you more water to flush it out. If you don't do that, you can get some buildup issues. Um, so pretty easy to care for as well. The, the thing with the water bill going up, most people say, most people say they never see that. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not that much extra laundry per week that you don't even notice the extra expense or the extra use of water. And one mom asked me to tell everyone who's saying about cloth diapering that their water bill actually went down the first three months because she was so busy with her newborn that she didn't shower on a regular basis. So she used less water with a shower, so it all worked out, and they saved money. Um, so, yeah, so I wouldn't worry too much about your water bills going up. It's, it's really marginal. Um, staining with cloth diapers, a lot of the cloth diaper detergents do help remove the stains, but it's inevitable it's going to happen. So... Mother Nature gave us this incredible bleaching thing called the sun. It works like you wouldn't believe. So when your diapers are wet after they've been washed, put them in the sun. Put them outside in the sun. Put them in a window in the sun. Much to my husband's chagrin, I put them in the car dashboard in the sun to see if that would work, and it did. Um, he was thrilled. Um, so just anywhere in the sun is great, and it will bleach the stains out of your diapers within half an hour, an hour, you know, once they're dry, you bring them in, and most of the time they look like new. We buy and sell used diapers here and had a mom bring in a stash of fuzzy buns. There was like 25 of them. She used them for 18 months. There wasn't a spot on them. I could have easily sold them as brand new, and that's what she did was she sunned them. Um, Bum Genius will tell you it's okay to bleach your diapers. There's no other diaper company on the planet that I know of that will recommend that you bleach your diapers. It will break down the, the PUL on them. So bleaching is not a good idea. Most companies will say if you 
really feel the need to do it, you can do like an OxyClean or an OxyBoost on them like twice a year if you want to. That's not going to hurt them. Don't do it on a regular basis. Um, we also sell something called Back Out, which is great for smells and, and good on stains as well. So there are options. Some people use vinegar. Some diaper companies don't like it. Some do. So do a little bit of research on your diaper company before you do that. Um, so, yes, um, one thing I forgot. If you're, so one, one thing with Paul diapers is some people say that um, certain diapers take longer to dry than others. So one, you can't use fabric softener with your dryers because it puts a layer of stuff on your diapers. So um, one option is wool dryer balls. These things are amazing. Everyone in the store uses them with our clothes. Um, so generally two to three is best. It's the same premise as like the tennis balls when you throw them in there with stuff. So it helps to, is it aerate, Jim? Is that what it does? Aerate. Um, so it helps to aerate the clothes and like, and it helps them dry faster. And it also helps soften them and they last forever and ever and ever and they come in a lot of different colors. Um, so they're seven bucks each. And just use them on your clothes and everything and then you don't even have to worry about detergent and I mean softener anymore we've been using them for two years and the only thing we've ever found with static was a micro suede blanket that we have um, and a customer said the same thing they had like a micro suede outfit up for the kid and it had really bad um, static but that's it so use vinegar on your micro suede and that'll work as your softener so and it'll it'll cut down on your drying time as well and um, so that's a good option for the safety money too You guys have questions? Did I talk too fast? Can we go over <laughs> anything else? Yes. Do you think you could go through each one and say, like, this is the cover and you wash it this many times a week, and this is like what goes in it, and you wash it every time it's dirty? Like, because it seems like some covers you wash less <coughs> than others. I'm sure. kind of confused about, like, I, mean, I just picture a dirty diaper, everything is dirty. So. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, with. Um, <coughs> So with a flat diaper, you're going to use a, a cover like this. So this has to be washed every single time. This kind of a cover, you can wash it every three to four times. We have customers that can use them more longer than that even. Um, if you get them that have this slick surface in there, you can probably get more than four changes out of it because you can use a wipe to clean it. Um, but so. This you can use every three to four times, so or change every three to four times. So this is every fourth diaper, every single time. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Um, this one, same thing. So every time it's getting washed, and then of course every four times. And then the same thing with the fitted. So this is getting washed every time, and this is getting washed every four times. When you get into um, your pocket diapers, that have your inserts, everything's washed every single time. Pocket diapers are also one of the top two most expensive options, which is why I think also they're losing a lot of favor because these are $19.95 and up um, from there. That's an expensive diaper change every single time. So, um, because you can't reuse this whole thing. It all has to get washed. And then this goes in the dryer, this hangs dry, ideally. Um, so that's how that works. I didn't say that. This goes, this hang dries and all of your material, all your other options go in the dryer. Um, they're all in ones. Um, everything gets washed every time. So there's nothing you can reuse with this. Ideally, if you can hang them dry, that's awesome. If you can't and you put them in like on no heat or low heat, it'll extend the life of them. Um, yeah, that's those. And then um, with the hybrids, it's the same idea as the other ones. So this is getting washed every three to four times, and this is getting washed every single time. And then these hang dry and this goes in the dryer. And then with wool, every week and a half, you're washing this, 
and anything inside of it, you're washing every single time. Um, and you can use any of the diapers with the wool? Mm -hmm. You don't, like, um, like anything that has waterproofing, you don't need the, you don't right. need wool. Yeah. But any of the other ones, the pre-folds, the flats, the fitteds, all of those can go in the wool, which is nice. It gives you a lot of flexibility with them. Um, can you put the wool in the dryer? Yeah. Yeah. Like a felt. Right. So you have to hang it. Okay. Yeah. Um, say... I think it takes probably 12 hours or so to dry, so if you wash it, you know, so that's why you need two, one on, one drying. Um, it, we, we had a poor mom came in and bought um, wool beads there. <coughs> so we should probably talk about cost too. So wool is expensive. You know, wool is going to cost you anywhere from $30 to $45 if you're not getting like the wool longies and stuff. But if you're buying two, it's actually a lot cheaper than buying the PUL or the TPU covers because you don't need nearly as many. Um, the negative to that is that they are usually sized, so you do have to buy them as the child grows, but that's why they work so well. We, they have an amazing resale value, so we pay pretty good money for them because we can resell them for money. So a poor mom came in and bought one, and her husband um, put it in the dryer and it shrunk a full size on her so um, we kind of helped her up and helped her out <laughs> getting another one but the, the resale value on them is amazing and we do do we do oftentimes get them in so it's a great way to buy a used one this sells for like 35 and we have a used small one right now on sale for 28 26 and it was never used her husband dried it and it was never used so um, that's something I would definitely say would be really cool to buy. How many different sizes do they come in? The wool. I was trying to think. Um, Baby Greens, which uses um, recycled sweaters, um, theirs are small, medium, and large. Um, I think Grovy is a small, medium, and large, and Sustainable Baby is just extra small, small, medium, medium, large, and large. So it's not a lot of sizes. No. I mean, you get a good wallet. Wow. You do, okay. you do. And actually, you know, a lot of times you can kind of skip a size, which um, there's several things in there, <coughs> but, you know, kind of, we'll be really honest with you, there's stuff that you can kind of push the limit and, and just skip that whole middle size a lot of times. Um, or there's ways to, like, you know, kind of squeeze them in, you know, into something that might be a little bit too big. So. And you should do two... Wet bags because they you can't throw them in the dryer, right? Mm -hmm. Right, that's right, exactly. Um, and same thing with pale liners, you should have two. Okay. Um, and I didn't talk about that actually, so thank you for asking that question. When you're on the go with your diaper bag and your cloth diapering, a wet dry bag is really helpful. You can use a plastic sack, but it's just not quite as useful. Um, it doesn't keep the so. You can put like your clean diapers in here and then just put all your wet ones in here and then when you get home, you can just dump them out of here and clean this. Um, it snaps like, it'll snap onto the side of your stroller. They're, they're so useful because you can use them the whole time you're cloth diapering. You can use them when you're at swim lessons. It's great to put the bathing suit in after swim lessons. We have a lot of parents with older kids who have them for that. They take them to the beach. So if you have potty accidents at the beach or whatever, you can just put everything in here. For potty training, they're amazing. You keep the dry clothes or dry underwear in the front and you just put this, when they have accidents, you put them on the inside of here. Um, so you can just keep using them and using them. We have women who have, don't have children who take them traveling with them and use them for laundry bags. Um, and bring their stuff home with them so you can keep using them. But I think twos, yeah, thank you for that. Do they make disposable liners? I know it's kind of going backwards they, on the whole premise, but no, I mean, right. like if you have like a babysitter that doesn't want to deal with anything and she just wants to toss it, is, yeah. is there like a disposable liner? They do, they do. Okay. Let me grab that and I'll show you um, that and we'll talk about something else as well.
so Romeo makes a really awesome disposable liner. Actually, um, if for some reason you choose the um, G diaper system, I would strongly urge you to avoid the disposable liners and just get Grovia's. Um, they have extra gussets here, um, which generally are in better shape, but ours have seen better days. Um, and they just lay right into the covers. They can lay into any cover. They don't have to be Grovia's covers, so they're really convenient for that. It doesn't defeat the purpose at all. I mean, there are sometimes it's just inconvenient to call diaper the airport, airplanes, you know, sometimes you don't want to. So, like, we, my sister does this when we fly somewhere, and um, it's really cool, actually, because all you're putting in your bag is this little tiny thing. You're not putting a whole disposable diaper in there, and then you're just laying it in here, and it goes on the baby. The Grovias are made out of biodegradable material. They can't call them biodegradable, um, but they're made out of biodegradable material. So you just lay them in there, and what's cool, like if you're on the airplane or whatever, you just kind of pull it out, and then you can put, this like almost works as a changing pad, and then you can just put another one in. So it's, they're really convenient. Um, they are packaged like this. Uh, they're $19.99 for 50 of them. So like, I was like looking at what our best sellers are at Christmas. It's insane how many of these we sell at Christmas, because everyone's traveling, and Thanksgiving. So it's just more convenient. Um, and also, it's a great option if they do get any kind of rash or anything that you need creams for. There is a lot lower in sap gel, and sap is sodium ac Do you know it? I forget. Anyway, it's, it's the thing that, it's the gel in there that absorbs all the moisture. Um, it's also the little chemical compound, so you want as little bit of that in your diapers as possible, so this is a lot lower in that than your pampers and your target diapers and all of that. So can you use like the petroleum based butt paste and that kind of stuff with the disposables? You can. Okay. Yeah, you can use anything you want with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so G diapers inserts are like you can flush part of them, you have to tear them open, you can do the same thing with these. If you live anywhere with any kind of age on your septic system, I would strongly not recommend very taxing on them. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the best. The, the other option too, like for traveling and stuff, is um, is like a more natural disposable. So we just started carrying Honest diapers, which this is Jessica Alba's company, and they're like insanely cute. These have peacock feathers, and they're adorable. Um, they are much lower in sap gel. They are not chlorine bleached. So they're a lot healthier option um, than the other, you know, ones on the market. Even like your Huggies Natural and all that stuff, these are far better than that. I would say they probably have about as much sap gel in them as Earth's Best, much less than seventh generation. Um, um, so it's a, it's a really good option. They're $13.95 a pack. So they are more expensive than like a big Costco jumbo pack or a, a Walmart pack or whatever, but they're better fitting. They're 35% more absorbent than the mainstream brands on the market, including 7th Generation and Earth's Best. And from what our customers say, the fit on them is amazing. Um, so that's those. If you want to be completely chemical free, the best thing on the market in the States is Booty Chicks. It's 100% chemical free, dye free, um, uh, what's this, the seventh generation, they dye their diaper, they don't dye them, they, um, I forget, and they color their diaper, they have a pigment to make them brown. So they don't use any pigments, nothing. It's all, it's NGO, which is a corn fabric, which is the same thing that these are. Um, so they're amazing. The rise is really hot on them. They work really well. They're more expensive than the um, than even the Honest. I think they're like seventeen ninety nine for a pack, but they're totally chemical free. So that's also an, another option. They're insanely absorbent. So that's also you know another option. We have parents who disposable diaper at daycare and call diaper at night and on the weekends. You can't feel guilty 
you just can't. You know, if you decide to cloth diaper and you're just done with cloth diapering for a little while and you need a break, don't feel guilty. Just be done for a little while and come back to it. Um, Ashley, who used to teach our class, was like, I just can't cloth diaper because I have three kids and we moved and I'm stressed and I can't teach the class if I'm not cloth diapering right now. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, you it's okay. You can take a couple months. It's all right. So, I would say like 90% of our customers who cloth diaper have times that they use disposable. So don't even put that guilt on yourselves. Be flexible with it. Um, some family members don't want dirty cloth diapers in their in their lawn, you know, in their washing machine. So if you go visit, they don't want any part of that. Um, so you know, give yourself. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> I, I know. It, I know. Seriously, I know. Um, so you know, just. Be flexible. There's enough, you know, you're going to put enough guilt on yourself. Don't make this part of it. Um, the cloth diapers were meant to work with you, you know, so not to be in, like some kind of, you know, burden. Um, so certainly be flexible. I don't have any other questions. So you talked about 24 for a newborn. Then what's, what comes after that? Okay. So when you're. <coughs> So you're changing your diaper like every two hours when you have a newborn. So that we say about 12 diapers a day. So a good stash size would be about 24 diapers. Um, and so as every baby's different, but generally at about four months, you're going to be at probably or three months, you're going to be at like 10 changes, nine changes a day. And then I'll just get less from there until it's probably at like five or six changes a day. Um, when you're choosing your cloth diapers, the one size diapers are awesome, but most of them are bulky in the beginning. So that's why we kind of say a lot of people will buy newborn, like pre-folds for newborns and then get their one size diapers because, or then use their one size diapers, which is where like the hybrid systems are really popular because you have these for later. And you use these covers with pre-folds or fitted in the beginning, and then you're not rebuying everything. Um, so it, we try to work with you with that too, is like helping you put together something where you can reuse everything as much as possible. Um, or we have like insane amounts of newborn diapers that get used and bought and sold in here on a daily basis because they're such a good option for the beginning when they're so teeny tiny. Um, and then spend your money on, you know, the all-in-ones or the pockets or whatever when you're not buying so many. Um, so if you started, like, at the four-month, then I would say, you know, 18 to 20 is a good stash. Um, some people choose not to cough diaper right away because you're getting used to being new parents. Um, and it may be a little overwhelming or you get a ton of pampers in whatever and you want to use them up so you know if even if you're looking at that you might be able to get a little bit less than 24. Um, so you can talk to us too and we'll help you gauge that. You can do less but and certainly a lot of our customers do for various reasons but you're just washing more than um, And the 24 like um, prequels say are one size? No, they're different sizes. Mm -hmm. You can do, there are three, well, we carry three sizes. You can get really insane with the sizing on pre-folds, but I think there's three sizes that are necessary. No, there's two sizes that are necessary. You can buy a creamy newborn. Those are five to ten pounds. Once you wash that, let me show you what happens when you wash a pre-fold. not um, it's not soft and it's flat and it looks like this the other thing about prefolds that's kind of stinky is you have to wash them a bunch you have to wash them like six times in order to prep them um, yeah you the good thing is is if you use like rock and green or something as your regular laundry detergent you can just throw them in with your other um, with everything else while you're washing 
There's a lot in, on the internet about boiling your diapers. Most of our diaper companies do not recommend boiling your diapers. Um, and with some of them, you're done. There's no warranty too bad. Um, but certainly there are a lot of people who do, and, and um, it's a faster way to prep your diapers. But so this is what it looks like. So, so this is a premium newborn. So this is four, five to ten pounds. So it'll shrink a lot. I'll show you how much on another one. So this, unless you're just so inclined, isn't really a necessary size. Um, it, if you have a preemie, certainly it's awesome. Um, if you've had children before and you normally have small babies, it's great. But for most of the time, I don't think it's necessary. This is the infant size. This is 7 to 14 pounds, and that's why I don't really think that the preemie's necessary. Most people don't have a baby smaller than 7 pounds, um, so, or that much smaller that you couldn't make it work. So this is it unwashed. This is it washed. So you can see the size <coughs> difference from washing versus not washing. And then you can see how it gets like puckery and quilty and soft. Um, so... This is, so this infant size, when they're smaller, there's ways to like fold it up and make it where it fits more on them by like doing stuff like that. And you can make it really tiny and that way you're spending less money on buying each individual size. There, because we have to make everything complicated, there are better fits also, which are a little bit smaller. Um, and there are certainly a lot of um, advantages to that, but you can see one advantage would be that it would fit your infant or your, you know your newborn better um so that's what happens when you wash and so there's a, so we carry newborn infant and premium this is premium washed this one has a stay dry on it so if you're having a boy and you want to do pre-folds these are an awesome option um, because you have the stay dry built in um but so this is the premium size so this is 14 to 30 pounds um, the cool thing about pre-folds too, like if you don't want to wrap them and you don't want to do a snappy, you can just tri-fold them. And um, this is, um, you can just tri-fold them and just lay them in the cover like this and then put the baby in there. So you don't even have to necessarily wrap if you don't want to. Um, it's a little bit easier when they get older to do it this way because everything's not so runny. Um, but so that's an option too. So you don't always have to use the snappy, and it's a great way to expand <coughs> the size of your diaper. So if you have the infants, and um, you can oftentimes use them a little bit longer. If your child's over 30 pounds and not potty trained yet, you can use them a little bit longer by using it this way. That answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? We yeah yeah please you um they advertise those like Tide machine washing cleaners or whatever. Is there any reason why you would need to like clean out your washer extra because you're washing poop in your washer? <laughs> no, and it's you no. Know, um, your washers are designed unlike I think your di does your dishwasher hold water, Jim? The dishwasher holds water, right? So the washing machines don't. Everything flushes completely out of them every time. We do, um, that stuff I was talking about earlier, that's amazing on stains, and it's really good for cleaning carpets. So when you're potty training, <coughs> awesome. Or if you're like me and have a dog who's potty training challenge, it's really good. Um, but this is great for cleaning out washing machines. We have a front loader and it gets kind of icky smelling. So we use this and it just really cleans them out. So, you know, if you just want to do it periodically. But it's also great with your diapers because it helps with smells and it does help with staining. So that's an option if you felt like you wanted to. But it's certainly not necessary to do that. No, it cleans it completely out. Which you can tell anyone who you're visiting if they get freaked out by that. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? We, um, there's always someone here that knows about cloth diapers. Most everyone here is using or has relatives who are using cloth diapers, so we're extremely experienced in it. Um, most, 
three of our staff members are completely obsessed with cloth diapers, so they love learning everything there is to learn about them, and they're at different stages of diapering, so you're, you can always get a lot of, you know, a lot of really great help. We also are more than happy to help on the phone, especially if you're, like, having linking issues or whatever. Um, that's why we're here. Um, we have, within each... Within each like category, there are different options and different companies that make different things. So certainly, we're here to help you get through that. There's a lot of like, um, and we do it too. Like where you can buy deals. Like if you buy 24 Grovias, you get X amount of dollars off, and it sounds really good. But I would really encourage you to think about committing to one system. Because no one diaper does it all as much as I would like to tell you that they do, they don't. Um, the Grovias are fantastic during the day. They stink at night. They're terrible at night. And admittedly, she'll tell you they're just not a nighttime solution. Um, you know, so the, the all-in-ones are great, but they're pricey. So, you know, it's, it's good to have some flexibility with that. Um, so we really encourage you not to just commit to one thing because no one thing does it all. So it's good to kind of have things for different reasons. If you're getting 24 diapers, get, you know, three that can be used at nighttime or nap times. Um, and if you're doing pre-folds, then that's great. You've got your covers. And so we really encourage you to kind of think outside of that whole buy one thing and you're good to go. Um, so what's your favorite system that you had to pick? Oh, it changed by the day. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, so, okay, this is a perfect example. I love Grovia. I love it, um, which is this system. I love it. I love how easy it works in our life because my sister um, is here with my niece and nephew in Richmond, so we're with them a lot. She um, just started working here, so we're together all the time, and when they stay with us, it's so easy to use the system. Um, I love it. It's awful at nighttime and it's not good at naps either so I am I love fitteds um, for newborns and for nighttime so um, like these two I think are just amazing and they make this like in a newborn size we're working on a newborn diaper rental program which could be a really good option where you just rent the newborn diapers for the first three months and then you come back and buy your stash, which is great because you may have a better idea of what you want at that point. Um, we also do a diaper trial where you can come in and we give you one of each kind of diaper. It costs $10, you keep them for 30 days, and you know better what you want and what works for you. You know, I can tell you all day long that I love Grovia, but if you have a child with itty bitty legs or, you know, whatever, it may not be the right system, so the diaper trial is a great option. Um, but so I love fitteds for nighttime and nap times, and um, then I am completely upset. I love the Simplex all-in-ones. I love them so much. Um, they're expensive, so I always feel like a salesperson when I'm telling you that. But I I love the Cipher. It's I love it for a lot of reasons. Spain, America. The quality of them is amazing, um, and I love the flexibility of having the natural fiber versus this and not having to stuff anything. Um, it, the absorbency is insane on the cyber, and it's nice and trim. So my nephew has this really cute, like, robot romper thing, and he needs a trim diaper, and so I, so those would be, like, my three favorites um, in my favorite companies. Um, I think everyone would tell you that if they could, most people in the store would have some of these in their stash. They're just beautiful. And those um, work at night? They say they work at night. They say that they use hemp inserts in them at night. We're not completely sold on that, but he's, ne he's never, ever steered me wrong, ever. So I have to believe him. Um, hemp is amazing. I'll go get a hemp insert and show you. The benefit of hemp is how absorbent it is. Um, but also, because it's super trim, <coughs> at nighttime, 
don't know if you'll be able to like really see the difference, but these are thick and these are thin. So when you're stacking layers and layers and layers to try to keep your child asleep as long as possible, their bumps can get so big. Even just a normal nighttime diaper, you usually buy like a size up on your pajamas if you're cloth diapering. So they're small and they're insanely absorbent. So they say with like two of these in this diaper, they'll work at night. Um, and like I said, they've never told me differently. So I'm gonna, when my nephew spends the night, when I'm gonna experiment, I won't ask my sister, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna experiment and see if it works. Um, so. Do you use the, instead of buying like with the, what were you saying? Oh, could you use a fitted diaper the with the, the, the all-in-one? The hybrid one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you wouldn't have to buy like separate covers, right? Yeah, and that's okay. another reason I'm, I'm in love with Grovia. She, We have a big trade show next week, and so she's promising some amazing things. And she, um, they have a really cool fitted for, like, this option of nighttime. Um, and theirs is a one-size fitted, which is awesome because fitteds are, like, some nighttime solutions can be expensive, which is another reason I like these because they're $19.95 instead of, $28. Um, but um, so they're working on some other nighttime solutions, but yes, you can use a long answer here. Could you just add like the hemp inserts to that for nighttime? No. no. Um, they say you can. They're not telling you to do We have all tried it. This is these hemp shrinks. Um, so, like, the hemp breast pads, the hemp inserts, they all shrink. Um, so this will get small enough to easily fit inside of here. It is fantastic if your child's over like one and you're gonna go out to short pump and go Christmas shopping for the day. It'll give you an extra hour per diaper probably. So they're, all, and they're three bucks. So it's awesome. It's not, it's just not. Um, I, um, I don't know why it won't because the covers are great and these are great, but for some reason it's just not enough. Um, it won't. But we have someone who's trying be their best to make it work and we're trying everything to help her and we just can't get it to work. But a fitted in that would be enough? It'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like especially like a bamboo or hemp fitted would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. There, are, and you know, again, like, uh, the, an awesome thing about a hybrid is if you decided to do newborn pre-folds or infant pre-folds in the beginning, you can buy your covers straight away and use them the whole time. These are not good until about 10 pounds. They're just too bulky, um, so you'll get a lot of leaking. Um, so you can just, you know, you get your pre-folds to $48, um, come sell them back, and then start using your inserts with them, and you're always using your cover, so it's really great. So truly with the hybrids, I think that's why they're so popular, is you use them for pre-folds, you use them with the inserts, and you use them with um, your fitteds, and you're saving money all along the way because you're not continuing to rebuy new things, and I'm really selling you on hybrids, aren't I? Um, so, yeah, and I think that's why they're so popular, and probably why I love them so much. And they do clean out our paper house. Do those come with them when you buy? Did they don't. The, sorry? They don't. they don't. They're sold okay. separately. Okay. Um, so there's another another hybrid system back there called Best Bottoms. It's a little bit different. Grovius has organic cotton, and then they have a hemp um, cotton stay dry on the top. We sell about 10 to 1 of the hemp over the organic cotton. So if you're just like uber, like sensitive about having organic, most then this is a great option. Otherwise, the hemp um, cotton is much more absorbing. It's trimmer, um, it's stay dry, just all the way around the better option. Same price, or actually I think the hemp's cheaper by a dollar. So they're sold in two packs and then these are by themselves. A lot of people just buy the cover by itself. and. Um, and you know, and use it with something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we do. 
We do also do registries here for them. So if you guys want to do them online or if you want to do them in the store, we're happy to spend as much time with you as you want going over everything and helping you do that. It's a great way to get your diaper stash <coughs> and spend the money on it. So, okay. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, we do have.